Hello and welcome to New Filmmakers Los Angeles in partnership with Movie Maker Magazine. I am delighted to be joined by the amazing filmmaker James Patrick Nelson with his fantastic film, Waking Up. But for those that haven't seen it, let's take a look at the clip. So I don't know, maybe you're not even gay. Or if you are gay, maybe you're the happiest gay man in the world and you've got a house in the Poconos and a husband I know nothing about and you only look at porn when he's out of town on business. I don't know. I don't know anything. I, I came here thinking you must be oppressed and lonely and I could say something beautiful that would make you believe that life is worth living and you would open your eyes like Sleeping Beauty. Sorry. I, If you can't hear me, this must be like waterboarding. <laughs> Listen to me go on and on about whatever the fuck. I bet mom's wrong, though. You probably can't hear a word I'm saying. Um, James, a big virtual hug to you. And to you. Thank you. <laughs> Congrats. Honestly, thank you so much for bringing your film to us at New Filmmakers Los Angeles. Welcome to our family. And uh, we know you were busy working in New York on a show, so we couldn't have you in person, but I'm delighted we get to do this today. So thank you so much. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Uh, now, waking up, like, I have so many questions. I've watched it several times. You did a fantastic performance and you wrote and directed it. So you've obviously triple whammy there. But um, for those that haven't seen it, tell us a brief synopsis of your film. It's a single take film. And it's about a young queer man who before the film begins has been given uh, some impression that his older relative who's just been taken to the hospital might secretly be queer himself. And so he visits the older gentleman by his bedside in the hospital and unloads a series of um, stories and confessions about his queer experience that he might be too uh, timid to share if the old man were actually awake and could respond to him. And it starts as, a, as an awkward ramble about sexual fantasies and hookup culture and gradually evolves into this really vulnerable confession about the challenges of building community and finding genuine love as much as people tell you that it gets better the challenges that he still faces in his midlife i i i love that i just want to say i found your character extremely in, endearing and it was just just wonderful like for a single take and you're carrying the entire film it's not actually easy to do that to kind of carry your own monologue and thought process so you know well done well done you um thank you where did, where did it come for you? Where did that inspiration come for you in the writing and then taking on this film and then wanting to put this film out there? Where, where, when was that moment for you What you wanted to, you know, inspiring to make this film? It was a handful of influences. It, throughout 20, 2019 is when it was, it was the end of 2019 that we shot it. Um, the, the, the impetus for the story really, um, really came because I was co-authoring a, a memoir for an older gentleman, an 80-year-old Broadway veteran actor, um, three-time Tony nominee, Royal Shakespeare Company guy who has since passed away, who was a good friend and who was a queer person and very, um, and who was very shy and timid about his queerness because he was a young man at a time when it would have destroyed his career. And so, so much of my, um, when I was listening to his stories, it I, I kept thinking. I'm going to take this back. Um, I spent um, I spent that whole year listening to this gentleman's stories, and invariably started to experience more and more of my own queer experiences in a, a comparative context. You know, I started to think more and more about the privileges that I have as a queer person in this era of progress as it compares to this man's experience. And then that would sometimes yield a lot of shame as well about the progress that I still wanna make on a personal level. Um, and then the, the way that it was made was because I, 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 it was simplicity. You know, I had written, I'd written two feature films that had been produced by other people and 
after those experiences, I had this urgent kind of desire to create, really create my own work. Um, but because I was starting from scratch at that, I was like, what's an aesthetic that I can pull off where we can do it as simply as possible with as modest a budget as possible. So that's where the single room, single actor, single take structure came from. I, I, I love it. I mean, honestly, as well, I mean, you know, um, you know, as, as, as a queer person, I'm very familiar with just the <laughs> environment and, and, and how things have obviously progressed. But I, I also love the touch in there that you, you know, kind of gave the value to, you know, someone that was older experienced a very different situation, a very different environment, a very different culture. Mm -hmm. um, how, how difficult that that is and i always say in, in our community we should always celebrate those that have fought for us and you know mm -hmm. have to reflect on that and never ever lose that and um you know how was it for you i mean you know i honestly think you're a fantastic writer uh I, I thought the writing was 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 so good you had so many so reflective moments but then you know very funny moments uh you know and 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 it was this all really flowed really really well together did you kind of always know that you were gonna play play the part was that something that you always knew from the very beginning yes i, I i'm i've been an actor my entire life i've been an actor for as long as i can remember that's what i studied that's what i've spent over a decade um doing professionally in new york off broadway theater regional theater and lately more independent films i've been a writer for um i suppose confidently so for the past five or six years now and then i've been thinking of myself more and more as a creative producer multi-hyphenate person in the last couple of years so acting in it was always um acting and it was always my first primary creative intention and then everything else stacked on top of it. Um, and, and, and also just because so much of it is my own lived experience and really personal vulnerable perspectives that I had about, about the subjects of the film. So yeah, I always intended to play it. Well, James, I think there's nothing you can't do. So whatever <laughs> it's gonna be and you will, you will make it and you're doing it and you did it very effectively very, very well. You know, Thank you on vulnerability i i think you spoke for just you know that was so endearing to actually be that vulnerable as as a character and to kind of unleash all of that and then of course won't necessarily reveal the ending or what could have been the ending um but you know was there some kind of like thoughts and in, 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 in your teaching the way you wanted to articulate that to kind of be vulnerable about things that we experience so what was that kind of context what did you kind of want your audience to take from your film Oh, goodness. Well, I, I never want to be too prescriptive about what I want the audience to take from it, because the audience is hopefully countless people who all have their own lived experiences that I can't really um, ever know for certain. Everybody's different and they're going to take something different from it. But but I think I think it's relevant to this subject. I'll say that I I've felt like as much progress as queer folks have made in recent years in representation on film and in television, um, that we still, I still don't see nearly enough stories where the queer person is number one, the protagonist, and when they are the protagonist, where they have multitudes, <laughs> where yeah. they serve more than one single function in the story and where everything that they say isn't always like my character contradicts himself <laughs> and my character sometimes is a source of great humor, but also a source of great vulnerability. And he's sometimes to some degree, he's incredibly confident in his queerness, but to another extent, he's incredibly self-conscious about his queerness. And he he's out and about in the modern world. He's not closeted, but there are a lot of times that he feels very unwelcome or unsafe in the yeah. sort of designated queer spaces. So I, I really wanted to, explore that all of the like disparate nuances of a queer experience that we don't always see these so often these days absolutely absolutely i mean it's different in different environments and you you know i think people forget that you're you're, you're actually coming out several times a week um, so, <laughs> yes 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 <laughs> it's kind of, it your whole life yeah how is it for you like because i mean goodness me playing like it was almost like i mean obviously it was essentially a, a one and a half man show um you know <laughs> <laughs> but how was it for you like playing in front of camera and 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 obviously in, in direct and how was that experience for you how is it working with your team how do how do you articulate this 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 experience on set in, in incredible i mean this project and then and then even more so for the the 
project that I just wrapped a couple of months ago, I, f I feel so humbled <laughs> by all of the people around me who have skills that I don't have. You know, it's, it's, it is so intense how collaborative an art form filmmaking is. And as, as many different things as I did, acting, writing, producing, in, in the case of this project, directing, there are so many things that I have no talent for whatsoever and that I knew I needed to bring on great people to to make the whole project worthwhile. So the the DP and the G&E team and the, the sound person, my God, um, and the post-production folks, I'm, I'm so humbled by everybody's generosity of spirit and working most of the time for less than what they're worth and with a great deal of passion and enthusiasm. Yeah, yeah, I'm so thankful to everybody. Great team. You obviously got a great team, James, and you know it, it definitely shows on camera. I mean, I I was watching it, and you know, being a you know a theatre lover, and yourself coming from a theatre background too, I, I I was just I was like, my goodness me, like I I I was so in there in this experience you gave us. I almost felt like I was watching like a live play. Mm. You know, do you do you is that something that you are looking into maybe to sort of extend this story as as, as something larger or or different jump what have you thought about that perspective not not quite i mean i've certainly i've cer certainly the 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 themes of the piece the, the things that i was alluding to a moment ago have influenced uh the the project that i just wrapped which is a a, a half hour project and the feature projects that i've been developing the, the themes of it are influencing a lot of my other work uh -huh. um but in terms of the extent the extent to which it feels theatrical i am um, I, w I would certainly admit that my um, background in, in the theater um, prepared me for being able to sustain the performance for a single uncut take in a way that I, I might not have been able to do if I hadn't done stage work for most of my life. But I loved, I loved that, the, um, that what we were creating gave me this in-between place where the, the, the sustained focus that is asked of an audience uh, in the theater could be paired with the the intimacy yeah. that is that that is allowed for on on film when the camera is like relatively close to you. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. But but my and I'll say that my my these days when I watch it and I didn't even really articulate this for myself when we were developing the piece and shooting the piece, but I realized afterwards the sustained single take. What resonates with me about it now isn't so much the theatricality of it, but the fact it, it speaks to what I was saying before about the kinds of queer protagonists that we see and the kinds that we don't see. Most stories about queer people, it feels like we focus on them long enough for them to be funny and then we cut away to somebody else, you know, or we focus on them long enough for them to be confronting one single uh, sort of queer specific problem and then we cut away to somebody else or we focus on them long enough for them to be a mouthpiece for one single uh, political perspective about the issue and then we cut away to somebody else. Yeah. So I, I was, I don't know if I succeeded in this, but I was keen on the idea of introducing a character who maybe exhibits some of what we might expect from a queer protagonist from the other things that we've experienced before. Mm -hmm. And then we keep looking, even as he stops being funny, even as he stops, uh, say in just one singular point of view, even as he starts to say things that are uncomfortable or not what we would expect. Um, yeah, I think there's value that, in that. Well, you did that really well. I mean, you know, you showed the multi layers of a human being, you know, despite, you know, yes, queer on top of that, but you know, I think that showcased really well because that's the journey of an experience and that's how it would be in that situation. So I'm glad you didn't cut away. Uh, mm. That was that was that was very refreshing for sure. Um, what is next for you, James? So I just completed post production mm -hmm. on uh, an episodic TV pilot, which we wow. shot in Los Angeles a few months back. It mm -hmm. stars Richard Reilly from Office Space and um, The Fugitive and Grounded for Life. It's called For Years to Come. And it is a subversive romantic dramedy about a young gay man who falls in love with his dead mother's hospice nurse while struggling to reconcile with his elderly father, who is secretly a porn director. Brilliant. <laughs> Wait, why would you want to watch it? I'm so glad. We've begun, we've begun our, our, our submissions and, and are excited to, to share it with audiences in 2023. 
Wow, that is the that is the most intriguing synopsis. I'm in it. I'm invested. So can't wait. That's so oh, I'm ex- excited. <laughs> um, well, that's really. Let us know, obviously, at New Filmmakers when we can start promoting you and talking about that for sure. But congratulations on on getting that put together because we know how tough it is to get a TV pilot and to make it. So well done, well done you. Um, you. In your career thus far, James, or anything anything closing that you could share. Uh, with our filmmaking audience, any advice, anything you go by as a filmmaker, as an artist, and individ- as an individual that you could share with our filmmaking audience? What I've really been thinking about more and more and more lately is that is is that I only want to be around people who are generous, kind, good people who affirm one another. I think because the distribution landscape is so unpredictable on so many levels these days, and has been for a while, (laughs) the only thing that really can, um, that anybody can really be certain about is creating an ecosystem in production and in pre-production and in development where you're working with people who respect one another and create an atmosphere of mutual good communication and affirmation where we can all lift each other up and rise together. I think it's as somebody who is first and foremost and predominantly an actor, I and so many of my peers for the longest time had dictated to us a mentality of being at the bottom of a totem pole somewhere and and that the way that we succeed is by appealing to people who are five miles ahead of us who need to discover who who need to condescend to discover us and give us the keys to the kingdom and very often that yields being in relationships with people who don't treat you with the respect that you deserve so i'm really and and the covid pandemic really gave me enough pause to rethink this you know when all of the when all of the hierarchies disappeared for a while and there was nobody to appeal to but myself it was it's so empowering to think i don't have to i don't have to work with assholes you know absolutely absolutely i think honestly that is probably one of the most important piece of advice certainly something that i've been thinking and we've all been discussing in in our, our festival is that you know we all got to treat each other with respect and kindness and that should have always be the way and let the right people lead and the right people join a team and all respect to those jobs and positions so i love that you said that so may every filmmaker really listen to that advice from james because honestly it's very very valuable we don't have to work with them anymore so you know <laughs> um but no thank you so much we're so proud of you um thank you for waking up we're looking forward to much more of your projects but thank you for joining us and we can't wait to see the next work of yours so thank you so much thank you so much i really appreciate it